What do we got, a who owl out there? What kind of fucking animal makes that noise? I need coffee, guys. I mean... And then I got this other fucking Yahoo bragging to me about his new car. I got news for you right now. I cannot get excited about buying a new car. That's how, I don't know, that's how dead inside I am at this point in my life. I love people. Uh, oh my, I love the new car. Oh my God. Hey, change, throw change in, good luck. I love when you, when you get a new car, people are running around throwing change in your car. Like, no, hey, fuck oh, that's coming out immediately. Yeah, it's not a fucking slot machine. Hey, good luck, good luck. You're, uh, you know something? Uh, I love it. Oh, you got a new car. Oh my God, you're driving it all over. You're showing everybody. Hey, I got a new car. Look at me, look at me. Yeah, and then you know what happens with a new car? It's like patio furniture. You ever see these guys? We bought a new patio set. It cost us five grand. Oh, a couch with pillows. And then you look at it by the end of the season, and it, it's all, it's all, the surface of it's all chalky. Now it looks like a, little, like a heap of shit. Yeah. After the first two rains, and the pillows are all banged up, That's like a new car. So you get the new car, and then like two weeks later, you know, once once the birds have uh, have treated have treated the hood of the car like it's the Jones Beach bathroom. Yeah. Oh yeah. Please. And then like the tire shine wears off from driving in, uh, in, 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 on the nightmare Southern State Parkway. Yeah. And then it gets rained on a couple times, and when, for some reason on Long Island, when when rain dries. It leaves a mineral bath on the car. Yeah, it's like somebody shoveled salts, bath salts all over the car. That's right, and leaves stuck in the windshield wipers, and then you come out of the house and you're like, oh, here's my new car. Here's, that's, my, that's my $600 payment a month on wheels for the next five years. What are you gonna do? Yay, I got a new car. That's right. I got news for you right now. My next car, I don't buy a car that's under 25 years old anymore. Because I just don't want, I don't want to do an emissions inspection. I get such uh, an anxiety about going to the inspection station you have no idea. I, I just want a 66 Ford pickup truck. I want to spit all over the place first when I talk about it. You know, in line six, three on the tree, leave me the fuck alone. That's right. Inspection time? Look, I, I drive it. I, I made it to the gas station. Now put the fucking sticker on. Cupboards are bare, by the way. I don't know if you realize that by now. Like Robert Oppenheimer from the 1940s working on the A-bomb. Come on. I'm watching this documentary the other day about Robert Oppenheimer. It was like the greatest thing I ever saw in my life. Yeah, oh yeah. He basically went to the government and was like, listen, we can, uh, he was a chain smoker, by the way. I didn't learn this in the documentary because after I, I, I watch a documentary, then I got to go research, research. I find out that Oppenheimer was a chain smoker, which makes me, uh, you know, respect him even more. 
Now I know he was really smart. He goes up to the the to Congress and he's basically like, we could split this atom here, make a shit ton of power. All right, I'm gonna tell you right now, the Germans are, are on to it. So uh, what's it gonna be? He probably, I, I mean, when you when you're one of the world's elite scientists, what do you do? You just knock on the president's door. Well, you just walk in. It's Robert Oppenheimer. Let him in. They're smoking. Who's in office? Truman. Truman's smoking. They're both smoking. Everybody's smoking. Yeah, the secretary outside, she's smoking. Come on in. Mr. Truman, uh, Oppenheim is here to see you. Let him in. He's like, uh, hey, Bobby. Uh, sit down, will you? What's the story? Well, uh, Dick. What was it? Oh, Harry. Well, Harry, uh. We've been minking around with this atom, and uh, there's a lot of power in this thing. I don't know. We could th somebody's gonna make a fucking bomba, and they'll control the world, basically. And he says, "I think the Germans are onto it." Yeah, they got a uh, disproportional amount of brilliant scientists over there. So he's like, "All right." We'll give you all the resources you want. Basically, they told him, they swung into an operation, and this turned into the Manhattan Project. They basically told him, you got carte blanche. Wherever you want to set up your laboratory, you set it up. They flew him all over the country. Yeah. Chicago, Washington. They flew him all over the fucking place. They said, Whatever, wherever you want it, we'll build it. So he goes, he goes into Nevada, Los Alamos, there's like a rich person's uh, camp. I fucking talked about this already. Didn't I talk about this already? Los Alamos. And there's like a rich person's camp. Like where rich people send their kids. And it, like, as soon as you sign up, you get a horse, they take you into the mountains, they teach you how to be a man, you make it, you're, you're building fires, you're putting a splint on your arm. I mean, what else is there? You build a fire, you make a splint, I don't know, and then they send you home. You're a real man now. This type of thing. Skin and animals, you know, I don't know. You make yourself some, uh, I don't know. <sighs> Raccoon drawers? Why not? Out in that cold? Anyhow. Oppenheimer sees this property. It's it's like a university, by the way, that's here. It's a whole facility. And he's like, uh, yeah, this is the spot. Bulldoze it. U.S. government comes in. Uh, they basically tell these Yahoo camp counselors, hit the fucking road. You're out. Yeah, wartime effort. They came in with bulldozers. It was just like, Brrr. they went, they, they bulldozed right over the horses, by the way. Yeah, the kids were like, no. Anyhow, they built facilities in like a week. Administration, laboratory, everything. It was built in like a week. This is like all out effort. They're in this secluded area. They're running generators. They got water coming from a stream. I don't know, this type of thing. They fly in all the most elite scientists. You understand? This is the most ironic part. The most ironic part. A lot of them were Jewish scientists fleeing Germany because Hitler was starting to ramp up the uh, the gas chambers. You get what I'm saying to you? So now they're going to work on the bomb that's ultimately going to destroy Hitler. I mean, this is like poetic how this works out. He gets all these fucking scientists together and they start like this camp and the population winds up... Uh, I don't know why we're talking about this. To be honest with you. <sighs> I got this guy at work who's bragging to me. He's bragging to me. I got the... 
I got the last Johnson & Johnson shot. I was like, oh, yeah, that's terrific. He's like, yeah, I got the shot. And then I find out like an hour later, they shut the shot down. They pulled it from the shelves. I'm like, oh, wonderful. What, what? He's, 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 he's all happy. He's like vibrating to tell me this. Oh, my God. I said, what happened? They sat him down. They're like, uh, you see it for the Johnson and Johnson shot. Yeah, all right, go to, go back to the, uh, pull one of them out of the dumpster for him, quick. You got I mean, what what happened here? I mean, we're talking about a guy that wears Crocs. All right, this is the same guy that told me he was wearing his Crocs and he, he fell down the stairs. Yeah, and his Crocs fell off while he's falling down the stairs. That's how I found out he was wearing Crocs. Because he told me his shoes fell off. I said, what kind of shoes do you have that fell off during a, during a, sta a stairway, a, a, a fall down a staircase? And he's like, oh, I had Crocs on. And I'm, uh, all I could think to myself is, oh, he couldn't land on his neck on the way down and just end it all. The cupboard's a bear. What do you want me to tell you? I'm just waiting to go to the doctor one day, and he's going to be like, oh, uh, Mr. Burns, you know, I'll go in there. I'll, I'll, I'll go in there for like, I don't know. I've been shitting my pants. What do you want me to tell you? I got diarrhea for the last week. Doc, what's going on here? Well, we ran some tests, and uh, Mr. Burns, I don't know how they didn't catch it before, but... Uh, Seems like you've had muscular dystrophy for the last 30 years. And I'd be like, I'd give the doctor a hug. I'd be like, oh, finally, an explanation for this. Finally. This is why I'm exhausted my entire life. <sighs> I don't know. Some people fear death. I just like, I, I'm like, I'm like, where is it already? Can it happen? If I ever saw, like, death as, like, you see it on uh, uh, in the books, you know, the gown with the fucking scythe or whatever, I'd run toward the guy. Like, two, two, two lovers estranged from each other. I'd run, I'd, pr I'd run, jump in the air, and just throw my neck at the scythe. He'd be like, wow, that was easy. Whoa. How was your day, death? Oh, fucking great. The guy jumped right in, neck first, into the scythe. I mean, who wants to go out to the bar? I could be the angel of death. What, are you kidding me? Oh, I'd scare the shit out of people. It'd be great. Uh, I don't know. Give me a break. And then this guy comes into the break room, and he wants to talk to me about baseball cards again. I'm like, oh. I was like, oh, hold on a second. What were you saying? About about Don Mattingly? Uh, I can't get into it anymore. I can't do baseball cards anymore. I can't do it. Brrr. So he starts telling me, he's a Spanish guy. You know that everybody is starting to collect for uh, baseball players with funny names. And I'm like, huh? What? He's like, yeah, check this out. And he, he shows me a picture of one of these baseball cards he's got, and it's a dick pole. <laughs> I was like, hold on a second. Now you got my attention. So apparently this is a thing now. They got, uh, people are collecting, like, base, baseball players with funny names. So I start to, to look up some of them. One guy is, is Rusty Cunts. <laughs> I can't imagine. Like, how did this go back in the day? I want to hear the television announcer. All right, we got cunts up to the plate. <laughs> Whoa, baby, look at that. Line drive by cunts. <laughs> Rusty cunts, yeah. What are you going to do? 
I tell you what, here we go. We got a we got a uh, pop fly from Dick Pole. <laughs> what did he say? Foul ball. Yeah, that's a that's a ball and a strike for Dick Pole. I mean, what are you gonna do? Who was the other guy? Oh, they had a guy from the 1920s, Cannonball Titcomb. That was this guy's fucking name, Cannonball Titcomb. <sighs> that's it, son. You can do it. You're a Titcomb. I don't know. You had Scott Lecoq. Somebody like that. Somebody Lecoq. Come on, cunts. Hustle up. Oh, my, my biggest dream is I just want to get my son into baseball so I can sit in the bleachers and listen to, like, uh, Baseball moms and dads fight each other. Oh, this is the greatest thing ever. This is what I've been waiting for. And uh, to be honest with you, I want to go there drunk and instigate fights. Because this is how it happens, you know? It's always like, hey, you know, one of the parents in the, in the crowd. This happens. Boy, number 17 sucks, huh? Hey, that's my kid. That's my kid you're talking about. And then uh, this is how it goes. And I'll, I'll be like, yeah, but he fucking sucks. What are you talking about, my kid? Yeah. What are you going to do about it? Come on, Johnny. Choke up on the bat like we practiced at home. Oh. Oh. Oh, my God. Yeah. Shut your fucking Long Island clam, honey. That's what I, 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 I'm going to get kicked out of. You know, you know that the, the umpire has the authority to throw parents out of the game? It's going to be my mission to get thrown out of every fucking game. That's right. I hear, I hear, I, I know parents with their kids in baseball. I hear all the things, what the, what the parents say. May, hey, coach, maybe if you put my kid in, we'd win the game. <laughs> oh, my God. I don't know what to tell you. Clapping too. Come on. Come on, buddy. Come on. Shut the fuck up. Hey, shut up with the clapping already. Huh? Who are you talking to? You, as a matter of fact. Yeah, what are you going to do about it? What are you kidding me? I have like a can of bear spray in my pocket. They approach you, you just like the Joker. Like, oh, not like the penguin from, uh, from Batman. <laughs> <laughs> Hit him with the bear spray, watch him tumble like right between the bleaches onto the floor, neck first. There you go, buddy. All right. Play ball. We're back. Hey, I think his neck is broken. Yeah. Ah. What are you going to do? His kid's crying in the outfield. Well, gets play the game. Game on. What do they say? Play ball. That's right, folks. Here we are. Beautiful day down at Copeg's Tanner Park. Let me get started over here. Yeah. yeah. There's a legendary story in Copeg about, about a mom that was heckling the, the, the baseball coach. And the baseball coach said, hey, lady, why don't you come over here and suck my dick? <laughs> He still got his job, by the way. That's Copeg. That's Long Island for you, baby. Yeah. Uh, uh, is everybody? Is anybody still awake? That's what I want to know. That and the other, the other miraculous thing I saw is that I saw a guy come into work with high waters on. I thought this was over. I haven't seen high waters since the '80s. Oh my God! Remember when somebody would wear high waters? Oh, you torture them to death. Oh my God! We had this guy, Mike Bellinoff. Look him up. He's probably he's he's probably working side by side with Robert Oppenheimer now. Yeah, with a name like Bellinoff. Oh, he's a scientist for sure. He made the Johnson and Johnson vaccine. 
He was like, I'll get them. I'll show them. I'll alter their immune systems for making fun of my high waters. Yeah, we'll just adjust this RNA right here. Oh, yeah. They'll, be all, they'll all be shitting their pants. That's how it goes. It comes back in grand scale. You met Mike Bellinoff walking down the hallway. I'll never forget. We walk behind him. Yo, Mike, where's the flood? And he used to walk on his toes. You remember these guys? He'd be walking on his toes. He'd turn around. Like completely unaware that he's wearing high waters. And then you snicker with your buddies. Look at this fucking goof. Hey Mike. Like he's so happy that, that you're even talking to him. Like you acknowledge him. He's like, yeah, nice pants. Oh, like the, oh, totally unaware. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Where'd you get him, Caldor? <sighs> hey, Mikey, step into the locker room over here. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna, you're gonna go for a little ride. We're gonna take you on the uh, what we, what we like to call the uh, the punching gravitron. <sighs> Mikey, you're gonna get to know the inside of a locker like you've never seen before. You understand? We're gonna fu we're gonna slam the locker so hard. Your nose is going to come out the vent. <laughs> Guys, I don't know what to tell you. Hey, Callahan here. Ay, ay, ay. <clears throat> Reporting for duty. Yeah. like that was scanning for crimes yeah and what what's the, what are, what are they doing I gotta have two way communications with these guys. I don't care if I gotta build the radio. Oh. Uh. Cardiac. Cardiac. I, I'm sick and tired of these uh, super cool dispatches. Too cool for school. Yeah, you know who these guys are. Please, uh, you meet them at a dinner party. So, uh, what do you do for a living? Dispatcher. Oh, they even talk like that when they talk to you. Low. Like, uh, dispatcher. Like, what? What'd you say? Yeah, I, I, I'll hold the radio over here for you. Hold on. Like normal, normal people talk into a CB like this. They got, they gotta go. Yeah, three six nine four two. Uh, you know what? You're out of here. The, the all of you. You're out of here. Some days, I mean, some days are just so boring. Like that, I don't think you guys realize. Oh, I'm sure you do realize. But some days it can be just so boring. I say to myself, at this age, I'm like, you know, you're half dead. And to me, there's no excuse for a boring day. Like, I get home from work the other day. Number one, I'm working. So, you know, this is how we start the day. And I get out. It's pouring, miserable rain, cold. And I get to the house. And there's my wife and my screaming kid. And I'm like, hell, before I can even say, like, hello to everybody, we got to hang this uh, uh, fucking curtain rod. 
She bought this curtain rod. Number one, she's buying shit. I, I don't, like, there's a new bag every day. Like, she's spending money. Like, what are you spending money on every fucking day? We got this curtain rod. It's like a double curtain rod. I, you've never seen anything like this in your life. It's got four things to hold it up over the window. Well, what are we hanging from this thing? Uh, bags of cement? This has got to go up over the window, and you got to hit the studs. I love it. She's she's Thorm Abrams now. Yeah. Oh yeah, the studs. So I so then I got to go into like uh, I don't know passive aggressive mode. I say, oh well, then I guess you don't want the uh, the supports to be uh, lined up symmetrically. Well, what do you mean? Well, if they're going into the studs, the studs are where the studs are. The, the believe it or not, when they built the house. They weren't like, hey, let's put the studs where the curtain rod's got to go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, if you're not going to go into the studs, you can't use those cheap fasteners. Again, I, I, I'm with somebody, a uh, materials engineer here. Yeah. Yeah, now she knows everything there is to know about uh, wall anchors. I, I want this curtain rod to be... Attach the studs now, just so I can hang myself from it. So I say to her, I say, listen, I'm going to tell you a little piece of information right now. There's not a chance in God's creation that these supports are going to line up exactly on studs. Yeah. What do you think happened? So I run out, I run out to the shed, I get my butterfly anchors. You understand? I love butterfly anchors. Oh my God, I've hung, you don't even know, it's it's criminal. I've done jobs where I've hung heavy things on the wall using butterfly anchors. I'm just waiting for the phone call. Somebody died. Yeah, TV fell on somebody's head, this type of thing. Like cantilevered TVs, CRT TVs. <laughs> I love butterfly anchors. I'm always bragging about how much weight they can hold. Anyhow, I go out. I get my butterfly anchors. I said, well, I, 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 I got to come in now. So we got, we got these anchors. You understand? You don't know anything about these anchors. This is something I know about. I'm like, I'm the facilities man. Do you understand? Let me take care of this job. Would you know? I went to screw in the supports. So I get the big, number one, that's the problem with butterfly anchors. Now you got to drill an enormous hole in the wall just to get the butterfly through it. So I got the big bit out. Wouldn't you know that at, I mark where the supports go? They are all perfectly lined up on studs. This never happens. It never happens. This is the equivalent of winning the lottery. Oh. Rita, now? Now? Right right on my right on my sock sneaker. Yes, this is the new thing, guys. We got sock sneakers. These are socks with a sole. Great foot protection. And I'm sitting there drilling the holes and I and I and I don't even know why I said it audibly. I said, I can't believe it. She's like, what? I said, all the all the supports are on studs. See, I told you they had to go into studs. And I'm like, <sighs> God is punishing me. I'm being punished. I'm being punished by, by Jesus himself. And I don't know why. I'm like, what was I, Adolf Hitler in a past life? I must have been Adolf Hitler. Oh my God. So I tell her, I ask her, I say, I'm very, this is, this is, you can't be logical with women. Do you understand? I say to her, okay. Is this the height that you want, the, the rod support above the window? Is this the height? Uh, um, yeah, 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 yeah. 
So I put them all at, the, at that height. We put up the rod. We hang the curtain. The, cat, the curtain's dragging on the floor. There's like a foot of curtain dragging on the floor. Oh, that's not the right height. It's got to go higher. Oh, wonderful. Oh, I just dr drilled enormous holes into the wall that we just painted, by the way. So now it's got to go up. That me let me get let me get the spackle. You know, I already had this plan. I'm like, oh, it's a fu uh, a fucking it's a it's a Yahoo curtain rod. I'll knock this out in like three seconds, then I can go do what I want to do. No, no, then the curtain rod's gonna come out. I gotta get the spackle out. Now I'm spackling. And of course, when you fill a hole with spackle, then the spackle dries, it shrinks. You gotta do another coat of spackle. Oh, I love it. You gotta wait for the spackle to dry and this project turns into th 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 three days for a curtain rod. Oh, I'm getting a splitting headache just thinking about it. Uh. Guys. What are we doing here today? I don't know. The place is a, it's a stark raving disaster in here. <sighs> Let me, uh... Oh, there goes a the whole box of screws. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we got two packages here. One coming from Robert from the Bronx. From the Bronx. Listen, there's a, there's a little tradition when you go on a road trip here on Long Island. Yeah, and that is every time you have to leave Long Island by car, you gotta take the Cross Bronx Expressway. Yeah, it's the biggest living hell nightmare on planet Earth. It's like we're going on a it's a, it's a road trip down to Florida. You know, it'll take uh, 24 hours to get there, and it'll three hours on the Cross Bronx. Thank you for that one. And the Cross Bronx, the 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 roadway. We're talking about. I, I, it, it's like ten lanes, and it goes underneath buildings. So you go underneath build. It's the craziest thing. And while you're under the building, you're like, oh my god, the building. As a kid, I used to have go into panic attacks. You're like, oh, oh fuck me, the building's gonna fall. We're on our way to Disney World. You understand? And, and listen, anytime it was Christmas Eve, or we were going on a road trip to somewhere exciting, I always thought we were gonna die. Yes, that's that's the way my mind works. It's Christmas Eve, and I, was, I just remember praying, please don't die before presents. Please don't die before presents. And, it, you know, it didn't help that we were over, uh, you know, relative's house, and my parents are getting liquored up, basically. So it's like you get in the, the, the car to drive home, and it's like, all right, mom and dad are bombed. We're going to die on the way home, and then I'm not going to be able to open presents tomorrow. I remember we were on our way to Disney World, and I'm like, oh, we're going to crash. We're going to crash. Uh, I'm in the back seat like this, and my mo my mo my mother's wondering why I'm biting my nails. I, well, as a kid, I used to I used to bite my nails until they would bleed, and then she told me my hands were going to be deformed. <laughs> that was like her scare tactic to get me to stop. And then I was like, oh shit, my hands are going to be deformed. And then, uh, anyhow, we're running we're we're on the cross Bronx under a building, and I'm like, oh fuck. No way I'm going to see Mickey now. This fucking building's going to fall on my head. I was stressed out as a little kid. And who's from the Bronx, anyhow? That who? Jennifer Lopez. That who? She just... She just broke up with A-Rod. Did you hear the news? J-Lo and A-Rod broke up. I'm like, yeah, and? And what? Who? Oh, listen, I hate A-Rod. I 
I hate him. I have a seething hatred for Alex Rodriguez. You want to know why? It's not even him personally. It's the way he exposed America. Yeah. He's a lying, fucking cheating fink who got to play America's greatest pastime. And the first time he got caught lying, cheating, and thinking, they should have threw him the fuck out. But they didn't. They they welcomed him back. Come on back, A-Rod. You can hit a baseball, so. It's winning. Winning forgives all sins. That's right. And I remember when he came back to the stadium. I was at the game. Round of applause from everybody. Hey, A-Rod's back. And I'm, I was looking around, and I'm like, what? What do you mean, yay? No, boo. Throw your beer at this scumbag. He lied to everybody. He cheated. And everybody's like, hey, hey, runs back. Hey, runs back. And I'm looking around. It was like a movie. I'm like, no. No. And then he lied and cheated again. And then he got welcomed back again. And I'm like, why? What? what? Am I surrounded by dummies? And then he lied and cheated again. And now he's like America's sweetheart. He's announcing on TV. <laughs> it's A-Rod. Look at him. We love A-Rod. And I'm like, what? And I'm like, I'm done. I stopped watching baseball. That's right. I'm done with sports. I don't watch football. I don't watch base basketball. I don't watch anything anymore. It's like, it's like the hell is this? Oh my God. <laughs> here's, a, here's a note, here's a note, for God's sake. Before we get into this. I forget to put these inside. The Bronx Gaming Center. Buy, sell, trade, repair. Everything from Atari, NES, PS4, Switch, Xbox, Rob. Yes, okay. Let's see here. You got a note? Oh. It says, Dear Bithead 1000, I'm a big a fan of your show. I want to thank you for the content you put out. These are a few things I came across that I think you and your son may like. Please keep up the projects and keep producing the greatest show in human civilization from your buddy in the Bronx, Rob. Wow. Wow. Also, this is this is his game place right here. All right. He's got a, games, a gaming center, the Bronx Gaming Center. Very cool. I mean, he's got information on here. I don't know if I, I should show the information. But the Bronx Gaming Center, check it out. How about that? What do we got here? The City of New York Department of Sanitation. <laughs> there you go. Wow, look at that. That that was almost my career, by the way. Yeah, I remember I went for government jobs. I went to the thing. I took the tests. And I remember I got all dressed up to talk to one of the administrators. And he's like, uh, he was like, so... He goes, I was dressed up. I had, you know, I had like a turtleneck on, a nice jacket, this type of thing. I came in, I had, you know, I had the uh, the hair gelled up to the moon, this type of thing. I walk in like Joe Cool. I sit down. The first thing the guy says to me, you got a girlfriend? And I was like, uh, uh, at the time I did. I said, yeah, I got a girlfriend. He goes, ah, he goes, I wanted you to meet my daughter. I said, oh, yeah? I still meet her. Give me a number. No, just kidding. So he was trying to get me the job, but I was such an idiot. I was taking the tests. He let me take the tests over and over again, and I kept on getting the same score. <laughs> <laughs> then they pulled me in, and they're like, all right, we got some opportunities for you. Uh, you want to be a garbage man? <laughs> in the city? And I was like, ah... I don't know. No. Anyhow. I should have did that. I'd probably be making more money. But I was like, what do I want to do? I want to... You know, listen, it's legendary in the city. You find dead bodies laying, you know, packed in a garbage can. It's like, all right. You know, I'm trying to do my job. Wow, this one's heavy. You open it up. Wow, there's a cut-up body. 
That's great. Psychological damage for the rest of my life? Yeah. Hey, somebody want to want to help me with this one? What do you do then? Do you call in sick the rest of the day? I, I tell you what, I go in, I'd be like, I gotta take a week off. I don't know. I, I, I gotta get my mind together. Yeah. I mean, maybe that's a good thing. You find a body. I don't know. Boy, this bag of leaves. Hey, somebody give me a hand with this bag. It rips and like a body flops out. You're like, ah, that's another week off. You get so hardened up from it after a while. You know? You're like, ah, look, a, a week off in a, in a bag. See ya. Yeah, I'm going nuts here. I don't know. I need another week off. Look at this. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Super Mario there. Dressed up uh, in his cat suit. Uh, thank you for that. And uh, I got to look, look at this from a distance. Who is this? Jesus Christ. It's Mega Man? Get out of here. Let me see here. Capcom. It's Mega Man. Oh, it's a it's a red Mega Man. There you go. Oh, my kid will go to pieces for this. Uh, thank you, Rob. Thank you very much. Thank you for thinking of the show. All right. This next one, very special. We're gonna need Johnny Blade for this. Yes, and this is coming from C, Connecticut, coming from Connecticut. Home of uh, Vince McMahon, by the way. I don't know if anybody's aware of that. I don't know if anybody really gives a shit. What the heck is going on here? Geez, there's a note, huh? Look at that note. I don't know if we got enough battery for this. Dear Bithead 1000, Yesy, I am much, as much as I appreciate and tip my hat to the person who sent you the, the game station. Oh boy, I know where this is going. Yes. Being a known person who dabbles in creating quality images for retro gaming, I couldn't sit by anymore and watch the greatest show in the history of, of human civilization, and you better believe that, not have something more suitable for your show. The case alone is quality, and it should be, because it's the best damn system ever made on the fucking planet next to the TurboGrafx-16 and the Neo Geo, of course. I hope you enjoy... I know who this is. Yeah, this is going to be uh, a game changer for the show. We've been in communications uh, about this. This is Chris. Yes. I hope you enjoy that I put this together, tested, etc. I began work on this image shortly before Kung Flu happened last year, testing and such. This image is one of a kind in regards to its interface. I've included games that I haven't put in public images. Translated English, Rondo of Blood for PC Engine CD, as well as Police Knots for the PlayStation. Over 21,000 games overall. Jesus, Crimler. Just plug in the controller into the left port. The USB-C power in the micro HDMI into the leftmost port in the back and you're ready to go. Best part is you won't have to pull the power cable to this like you do the game station, this kills can kill the drives. I've included a script to just hit the power button when you're done. Oh my god, this guy. <sighs> and it'll auto shut down everything. Hitting reset will reload to the main menu for you in the middle of games. If you let the menu sit still for a couple minutes, you'll get a screensaver with random game videos, and the names of the games. If you hit start during this, it will launch the game. If you hit right on the controller, it'll show you the next random game. Oh my god. You may, you may need a Bluetooth keyboard for some of the MS-DOS and PC-based games. The majority of the games will work with a controller, Amiga, and Amiga CD, 
auto load games and Commodore 64 has a virtual keyboard by pressing the select when a game loads arcade games that are dual stick should work with both analog sticks oh my god Robotron Smash TV etc any arcade game that has a dial heavy barrel Akari Warriors Tron will use the top bumper buttons to turn so it makes it a lot easier when you're shooting shit and moving the analog also if you want Menu music, Jesus, crime lur. Yes, bop, bop. If you ever need me to re-image drive in the cartridge slot, it's a one terabyte SSD drive inside a Nintendo cartridge case itself. Please feel free. Wow. Wow. Never quit the show, brother. We are totally with you in this thing called life. With this system, you have plenty more content to show properly now. Sip a jack and sip a jack here eternally. All the best. Uh, wolf, wolf, a wolf, a nose. That's the, uh, the YouTube name. Wow, this is incredible. Chris. Yes. Chris. Wow. Yeah, he told me about this. He's been working on this. This guy is like the engineer of all engineers here. All right? We're, we're, de we're, we're dealing with elite. Elite scientists. Wow. Look at this. It's heavy. Holy shit. So he programmed this sucker right here. And we're talking about everything Sega Saturn. Guys, look at this. Awesome. Awesome. Wow, it's heavy. It's the power. There's the reset. Oh my god. Uh, the plug. Oh yeah, look at this controller. USB. Oh, let's get started here. Picture, picture time! Controller. Okay. All right, we tapped into the Edison line. We did all this. We did all this. I had to shut off the camera to preserve battery. We'll kill the lights of attrition. I was just trying to see if this thing's going to work, and it does beautifully. Oh, look at this. Guys, let's see what we got here. Oh my god, so exciting. <clears throat> I have a feeling I know exactly where we're going to go. Dee, 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 dee. 3DO! Oh! <laughs> 3DO! Amstrad, oh my god. Arcade, Atari 800, 2600, 5200, 7800, Jaguar! Ah! Lynx, ST, Astrocade, Wonder Swan, Wonder Swan Color, Amiga, Amiga C, ColecoVision, uh, Ishka, 8 bit console, baby! Suck it! Wait, Dragon? What? Channel F? The Vectrex? Oh, Intellivision? This is impossible. 
It's impossible. MS DOS. Oh my god. Look at games available. Oh my god. MSX. MSX2. Ah! Oh, PC Engine. PC Engine CD, baby! PCFX. Oh my god. Oh my god. Temple Graphics. Oh, it's too much. Game Boy. GBA. N64. NES. What? Super Famicom, Super NES, Hacks, ah, uh, ah, uh, what is this, ah, uh, I can't contain myself, Neo Geo AES, CD, ah, oh, Pocket, D, 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 I can't, I, what is all, 32X, Sega CD, Dreamcast, Game Gear, Genesis, Genesis Hacks, Mark III, Master System, Mega Drive Japan, Naomi, Saturn! Oh God, okay, we're gonna have a little fun here. Let's go to the Saturn, and let's go to, let's go to Mass Destruction, can we? Just for the sound effects. Is it here? Oh, oh this is one of my dreams. Wait a second, I hit the wrong button. Oh, guys, ready for... You're gonna, th you're gonna think you're in Vietnam in about T minus three seconds. What do we got here? All right, we got some time on the clock. Not much, but here we go. Oh my god, I'm popping a rod. Oh my god, it looks beautiful. I had to pick something because our battery's about to die. Whoa! <laughs> this is mass destruction, baby! never heard sound like this in a game. Okay. Um. Where is it? Where is it? Here it is. Come on, baby. Where are you? I do now? Maybe I'm doing something wrong. Am I doing something wrong? Select. All right, we gotta try, we gotta try something else. All right. Oh, here we go. All right, let's do it this way. Oh my god, look at this. Oh, there's so many. No, if we're going to do it this way, what we're going to do is... Yes. Oh, it works great. Hold on a second here. If we're going to do it this way, we're going to go right back. We're going to the 3DL. 
Because I think they had mass destruction on the 3DO as well. Uh, what? Oh, you know what we're going to do? Let's get a copyright strike, guys. Let's get a copyright strike for the for the sake of Christ. Here we go. Oh, crap. Here we go. Yeah, I know. They, they, uh, every other YouTube is so cowardly they won't play this game. We're doing it right now, big time. Oh, what a legendary game. Oh, go, 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 go! That's right. That's right. Somebody's gonna get the shit kicked out of them. Let's go, baby, let's go. Ah! No! Come on, come on. We're not leaving until somebody falls off a motorcycle. Come on, I, 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 what I lose the ability to punch? There we go. Okay. <laughs> Woo, baby! Come on, come on. Get off your bike. Oh! Oh, but you have any idea how incredible these graphics were at the time? This was unbelievable. And how fast they were moving. Come on, come on. Oh! What are we, in first place? Oh, yeah, come on. You know what? I'm going to kick this cop right off his motorcycle. Come here. I'm slowing down. Come here, buddy. The fuck? Get the fuck out of here! Get out of here, bitch! Get out of here, bitch! All right, drop the control. All right. Power off, guys. Do you realize we just played 3DO, by the way? Do you realize we just played 3DO out here? Do you realize you just tuned into the greatest video game program in the history of human civilization? And you better believe that. With the 4K Vice! We'll see you next time. Okay, guys. I don't know if you're aware of this or not, 
but our Patreon page is on fire. Okay, we do an, an advices program, a weekly advices program. We're up to episode six. Oh, I'm so proud. We're building a wonderful library where we give, we help people out. We give people wonderful advices. Advices like this. Uh, 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 here we go. Here we go. Glycogen injection coming at you. Beer. Yes. Guy who was working out next to me, he dropped the, he threw his water bottle on the floor. I'm like, what, you want to go? I'm dead serious. I just want to fight everybody now. <sighs> I'm not even Irish for crying out loud. Uh, I don't watch a lot of porn, but when I do, it's always pregnant porn. Uh, that's a real resume stuffer. Been with the girl of my dreams for about three years now. We both got, this guy's got to be from the Midwest. The girl of my dreams. <laughs> what are you in Kansas, pal? God almighty. What's wrong with you fucking people? You're out of here. That's right. I mean, it's knockout stuff. So if you need advices, no problem. Email me down below. In the header, put advices. And that's what we do. We solve all your problems. We solve them like that. You understand? Okay, guys. Thank you for all the support on Patreon. I really appreciate it. I'm very grateful. We'll see you next time.